the foundation, regular eye exams. Think of your eye doctor like your car mechanic, but for your eyes. Regular checkups are absolutely crucial for detecting potential issues early, especially since many serious eye conditions show no symptoms in their early stages. For newborns, doctors are looking for something called a red reflex. The absence of this reflex can be a sign of a rare but serious condition called retinoblastoma, a pediatric eye cancer. For children, routine exams aren't always needed unless parents notice something like poor eye contact or rapid eye movements. School screenings are a great way to catch common childhood eye diseases like amblyopia or lazy eye and strabismus, which is when the eyes are misaligned. Now for adults, things change a bit with age. If you're under 40 and have no symptoms, you might not need an annual exam. But once you hit 40, a comprehensive eye exam is advised, as age increases the risk of conditions like presbyopia and glaucoma. These exams should include a check of your eye pressure, often done with that puff of air test, which is a key indicator for glaucoma, as well as an examination of your retina and optic nerve. What to expect as you age? Speaking of age, let's talk about a few things that are almost guaranteed to happen if we live long enough. The first is presbyopia. Ever notice that around age 40 you start holding your phone or a book farther away to read it? That's presbyopia, which happens because the natural lens in your eye stiffens, making it difficult to focus on near objects. The good news is, a simple pair of readers solves this problem perfectly. And here's something important. Using readers doesn't make your eyes weaker or accelerate your dependence on them. That's just a myth. What it does provide is enormous enjoyment to actually have good vision all the time. The second big one is cataracts. A cataract is a normal part of aging where the lens inside your eye gets cloudy due to oxidative changes. If you live long enough, you're almost certain to get them. But here's the amazing news. Cataract surgery is incredibly safe and effective with a 99 plus percent success rate. It's a quick 4 to 12 minute procedure that replaces the cloudy lens with a clear plastic one, often improving your vision significantly. The biggest challenge with this worldwide isn't the surgery itself, but simply getting access to care. Daily habits that actually matter. So beyond the natural aging process, what can we do in our daily lives to protect our eyes? Let's talk about sunlight, because this one might surprise you. We've all been told to go outside and play. And it turns out that's one of the best things you can do for your eyes, especially for kids. Recent research suggests that spending time outdoors in full spectrum light is more crucial for preventing the progression of nearsightedness or myopia in children than we previously thought. Studies show that children who spend more time outdoors have slower progression of nearsightedness. The difference between zero and one or two hours outside is clearly there. This effect is less pronounced in adults, but the message is clear. Get your kids outside. Now, while full spectrum sunlight is good for preventing myopia, UV light is a different story. UV light is harmful to eye health, contributing to conditions like cataracts and dry eye. While most modern eyeglasses and car windshields block UV light, wearing a brimmed hat and sunglasses outside is still smart, even if the long-term impact mainly affects when you'll get cataracts by just a few years. And what about blue light? Here's where the science might surprise you. The scientific consensus is that blocking blue light isn't generally helpful during the day and may even mess with your sleep cycle. However, Avoiding bright lights of any color late at night is important for melatonin production and good sleep. And another simple but vital thing to remember is eye safety. Eye trauma is a significant and often preventable cause of injury. Wearing protective eyewear during activities like metal grinding, gardening, sanding, or sawing is strongly recommended to prevent unnecessary eye injury. It takes just one flying piece of debris to cause permanent damage. Let's also talk about your tears for a second. Your eyes are naturally self-cleaning machines. 
Tears contain enzymes that break down bacteria, and they're made up of both salt water and essential oils that prevent evaporation. For most people, gentle eyelid cleaning with diluted baby shampoo can help with conditions like blepharitis. And if you get something in your eye, rinse it with sterile saline solution or preservative-free artificial tears. Contact lenses, the good and the safety rules. If you wear contacts, here are critical safety tips. Daily disposable lenses are generally safer than extended wear lenses because there's less risk of infection. Never, and I mean never, sleep in your contacts overnight. This dramatically increases your risk of serious bacterial infections that can threaten your vision. Also, keep in mind that as you age, you might find contacts less comfortable due to changes in your tear film. The big three major eye diseases. Now let's talk about the three most serious eye diseases you should know about. Glaucoma is the leading cause of irreversible vision loss worldwide. It's a neurodegenerative disease that attacks the optic nerve connecting your eye to your brain. The biggest risk factors are age and high eye pressure. And here's the scary part. High eye pressure usually has no symptoms. That's why those regular eye exams are so crucial. Glaucoma often starts by affecting your peripheral vision, which you typically won't notice until the disease is quite advanced. Treatment focuses on lowering eye pressure through eye drops, laser treatments, or surgery. And even with treatment, 10 to 20% of patients still experience meaningful vision loss. Macular degeneration, or AMD, affects the macula, the central part of your retina responsible for sharp vision and color. There are two types, dry and wet. The dry form is a slow degeneration, while the wet form happens when leaky blood vessels grow where they shouldn't, causing sudden vision loss. For wet AMD, injectable drugs are very effective. For dry AMD, there's exciting news about new treatments that can slow progression by 20 to 25 percent. But here's something you can do right now if you have moderate to severe dry AMD. Take Aries 2 supplements. This specific formula, containing 500 milligrams of vitamin C, 400 IU of vitamin E, 2 milligrams of copper, 80 milligrams of zinc, 10 milligrams of lutein, and 2 milligrams of zeaxanthin, has very strong clinical trial support for slowing vision loss. And this is important. You can't get the right mix from regular food or standard multivitamins. You need the specific Aries 2 formula. Diabetic retinopathy is a major complication of diabetes that damages the retina. The number one most important thing for prevention and management is rigorous control of your blood sugar and blood pressure through diet, exercise, weight management, and medication when needed. Regular eye exams are crucial for diabetics, at least annually, to catch problems early. Now for the really exciting stuff. There are some emerging therapies that could revolutionize eye care. First is red light therapy. Human studies have shown that just a single three minute exposure to 670 nanometer red light in the morning can significantly improve color contrast sensitivity in older adults to levels seen in younger people. The effect can last for up to a week this timing is critical. It only works with morning exposure, likely due to how our cellular energy systems change throughout the day. This could be a simple and highly economic intervention with huge potential. The key is not to use uncomfortably bright light, as that can damage your eyes. Another promising area is high-dose vitamin B3 for glaucoma. Strong evidence in animal studies suggests this pathway protects against glaucoma and other optic nerve diseases. Limited but promising human trials show it's safe and can improve retinal function in glaucoma patients. Large-scale clinical trials are happening worldwide right now. While the data is still early, in specific severe cases where traditional treatments aren't working, some doctors are already considering it as a potentially safe add-on therapy. Your eyes, a window to your brain. Here's something that blows my mind. Your retina is actually an outgrowth of your brain. That means advanced imaging of your eyes can detect signs of neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and MS. 
researchers are finding completely new structures in the retina of MS patients that could become a whole new generation of biomarkers for diagnosing disease, tracking how it progresses, and seeing if treatments are working. This is leading us toward precision health, identifying people at risk to prevent disease before it even starts. Your action plan. So what are the key takeaways from all this? Get your eyes checked regularly, especially after 40, because many diseases are silent in the early stages. That puff test and retinal exam could literally save your sight. Get outside, particularly if you have kids. That outdoor time and natural light is one of the best things you can do to prevent nearsightedness. Take care of your overall health. Control your blood sugar and blood pressure. What's good for your heart is good for your eyes. Absolutely, do not smoke or vape. Nicotine and smoke increase your risk of both glaucoma and macular degeneration. Wear your glasses or readers without guilt. If they improve your vision and comfort, use them. It's an enormous enjoyment to actually have good vision all the time. Protect your eyes during risky activities. Safety glasses during gardening, grinding, or woodworking can prevent devastating injuries. If you have contact lenses, stick to daily disposables when possible, never sleep in them, and follow cleaning instructions religiously to prevent serious infections. Consider AREDS2 supplements if you have moderate to severe dry macular degeneration, but get the specific formula with the right dosages. Stay informed about emerging therapies like red light therapy and high-dose vitamin B3, but remember these are still being researched. Don't self-treat serious conditions without professional guidance. The future of eye care is incredibly exciting. We're moving toward a world where we might be able to prevent vision loss before it starts, enhance vision beyond normal levels, and even use our eyes to monitor our brain health. But the foundation will always be the basics regular checkups, protecting what you have, and taking action when problems arise. That's it for today. I hope this gave you a better understanding of how to take care of your eyes and what amazing developments are coming. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.